I would all the world might be cousined, for I have been cousined and beaten too. And if it should come to the ear of the court how I have been transformed, and how my transformation have been washed and cudgelled, then they would melt me out of my fat drop by drop, and lick a fisherman's boots with me. I warrant they would whip me with their fine wits, till I was as crestfallen as a dried pear. I've never prospered since I forswore myself at Primero. If I had wind long enough to say my prayers, then I would repent. Uh, whence come you? From the two parties. Well, the devil take one party, it is damn the other, and so they shall both be bestowed. I have suffered more for their sake, more than the villainous inconstancy of man's disposition is able to bear. And have they not suffered? Oh, speciously one of them. I mean, Mistress Ford is black and blue. Uh, she has not a white spot upon her. Hmm? Say is thou to me of black and blue. I myself was beaten into all the colours of the rainbow, and was like to be apprehended for the witch of Brentford, but for my admirable dexterity of which the counterfeit in the acting of an old lady delivered me the name constable that set me in the stocks, in the common stocks, for a witch. chambers. Oh, we shall talk of it then, and I warrant you to your content. Oh, good heart. What to do with it to get you together? One of you must not have served heaven well that you are so cross. Come into my chamber. <laughs> Master Fenton, talk not to me. My mind is heavy. I will give over all. Yet hear me speak. Assist me in my purpose, and I'll give thee a hundred pounds in gold more than your loss. I will hear you, Master Fenton, and I will at the least keep your counsel. From time to time I have acquainted you with the dear love I bear to fair Anne Page, who mutually hath answered my affection so far forth as her spell may be her chooser. I have a letter from her of such contents as you will wonder at, the mirth whereof so larded with my matter that neither singly can be manifested without the show of both. Fat Falstaff hath a great scene. The image of the jest I'll show you here at large. Hark, good my host. Tonight at Hearn's Oak, just twixt twelve and one, must my sweet Nan present the fairy queen. The reason why is here, in which disguise, one of the jesters, something rank on foot, her father hath commanded me to slip away with slender, <laughs> and with him it at Eton immediately to marry, she hath consented. Now, sir, her mother, ever strong against that match, and firm Sir Dr. Caius, hath appointed that he shall likewise shuffle her away while other sports are tasking of their minds, and at the deanery, where a priest attends, straight marry her. To this, her mother's plot, she, seemingly obedient, likewise hath made promise to the doctor. Now, thus it rests. Her father means she shall be all in white. And in that habit, when Slender sees his time to take her by the hand and bid her go, she shall go with him. Her mother hath intended the better to denote it to the doctor, for they must all be masked and visited, that quaint in green she shall be loosened <coughs> with ribbon pendant flaring about her head. And when the doctor spies his vantage right, to pinch her by the hand. And on that token, the maid hath given consent to go with him. Which means she to deceive for her mother. Both, my good host to go along with me, and thus it rests, that you'll procure the vicar to stay for me at church, twixt twelve and one, and, in the lawful name of marrying, to give our hearts united ceremony. Well, husband, your device, I'll to the vicar, bring you the maid, and thou shalt not, like a priest, 
so shall I evermore be bound to thee. Besides, I'll make a present recompense.